Lori, you've joined you joined some of your 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 uh, counterparts here on the street in terms of lowering your estimates for uh, for the S and P for the year and for next year and lowering your targets. What was behind the move finally? So look, you know, I think that we were surprised at how far markets broke to the downside earlier. We thought we were going to really be able to stick in this growth scare range. Uh, but unfortunately, this last batch of Fed actions just took the market down a notch lower and brought recession onto the table. So we needed to reflect that. But we wanted to do some hard thinking about what the earnings outlook would look like. And so we did, in addition to changing our price target, we did make a pretty sizable move on our earnings forecast for next year. And I would say, you know, we're actually significantly below consensus right now in terms of those earnings forecasts. Um, but we do think that, you know, the stocks are still a buy in here. We think the bottoming process has started. You know, I will say, Melissa, I don't have absolute conviction that we've already seen it in June. I think it's possible. But I'll, I'll be honest, I like seeing a little bit of red on the screen today because as we looked back over the last week or so, we heard a lot of investors saying, well, let's just rip off the Band-Aid, reset earnings expectations, and then markets can rally back. And we had a pretty good start to this reporting season, and stocks were rallying. Um, I, I think that if you really want to rip the Band-Aid off, we've got to get some of these earnings numbers down, and we do need to get a little bit more pain in the share prices. Uh, you mentioned that this is sort of an average of the various scenarios that you had been uh, thinking about that could happen this year, Lori. And so I'm wondering what the range of scenarios are from, from really bad to the best case. So, you know, we have a number of scenarios that point us to the 4,100, 4,200 type area, and that's really where our target came in. We have one number, one of our sentiment recovery scenarios that can get you pretty close to kind of the 4,900 type level. Um, that's an outlier in the forecast. We also have some that are sort of stuck down around 3,800, 3,900. And I think that just underscores that there is a rather binary range of outcomes in here. One of the things that we said, Melissa, and you know, just even sort of putting our targets aside for a moment, which I think are in the more optimistic camp, if we if we really want to be able to find a market bottom in here sometime before the you know kind of end of the third quarter, it's really going to hinge on the idea that we're getting this short, shallow, relatively quick recession that I hear a lot of investors talk about. If we're looking at a recession, if we're looking at an economic downturn that really drags deep into next year, I think it is going to be tough for stocks to find a bottom in here. And our target, you know, may not be achievable. But we are taking that optimistic scenario. We do think the consumers and corporations are starting from a position of strength here. We think companies will be able to manage through to some extent on the earnings side. And so we do see a positive setup. But I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that there is a binary range of outcomes that could be in front of us. It sure does seem like it on the street, Lori, in terms of the binary uh, outlooks uh, that exist out there. How closely are you following Europe and what's going on there in terms of how deep that recession could be, the pain that could be felt uh, across Europe? We are following it, but I'll tell you, Melissa, my job is to call the U.S. equity market. And one of the things we talked about in the report we put out this morning is we still like U.S. equity equities as a safe haven trade. Um, one of the things we have noticed that keeps really kind of limiting some of the downside on U.S. equities this year, and I know it's been a rough year, but frankly, a lot of people thought they would go down a bit more than they already have. And I think one of the reasons that has happened is because when you gauge recession odds, when you gauge economic impacts from what's coming, it really does seem to be worse in Europe than the U.S. And so I think that it does matter. But from an equity markets perspective, I'm going to be a little bit self-centered here and say what's bad for Europe ends up being good for the U.S.